simple. It does take a little bit of time and a little bit of prep work, but it's worth it in the end because when you're making all of your recipes that called for stewed tomatoes, you've got your own homemade. The recipe I'm using today is really simple. I'm not adding any herbs or spices or anything like that because I like to control that when I'm making the recipe the stewed tomatoes are called for. I don't want to use Italian stewed tomatoes in chili. So it just simplifies my life a little bit not having to make five different kinds of stewed tomatoes. So the first thing we want to do is take the core out of our tomato. I've got some water here that's just about to boil and that's going to help us take the skin off. And I'm just going to make a little X right there and that will help us peel our tomato skins off like so. So when this gets boiling I'm going to quickly blanch them and that will loosen up the skin so it should peel off pretty easily. And you've got to do this with each tomato. And the flavor that you're going to get of your stewed tomato is really dependent on the flavor of the tomatoes that you're using. And stewed tomatoes you can really use just about any kind of tomato. The tomato I'm using today is vine ripe tomato and it just happens to be what was on sale at the grocery store. And if you see any little spots like this, go ahead and just cut them out. It's not a big deal. This little knife that I'm using is a serrated knife, which I find cuts through tomatoes better when you're dealing with the skin. The other thing you can use is a peeler. It does take a little bit longer if you're skipping the blanching step. In fact, let me show you how that works out. Could end up wasting some of the flesh on there rather than it just peeling right off. So it's not a significant amount, but if you care about that type of thing, then maybe skip the peeler. But this is what it ends up looking like. All right, all of my tomatoes are prepped for the blanching process. I'm just going to clear a few things off my cutting board while I wait for that to finish. The other thing you'll notice I have is a bowl of water. This is cold water that we want to take the blanched tomatoes and put it right in because we don't want it to continue. The other thing you'll need to have ready to go is some quart or pint jars. You'll need to have them sterilized in warm soapy water. You can also dip them in hot water from your pot, but not more than you might break the glass. So have those ready to go because that's what your end product is going into. Our water's about boiling here, so I am going to drop some in, and I'm not gonna crowd my pot. I just want enough for what I would consider one layer in there. We're gonna get those sitting for a minute. And I don't have my timer handy, so I'm just gonna watch my watch. 30 to 60 seconds. If they're bigger tomatoes, I always do 60. That's perfect, that's exactly what you want. Oops, that one went too long. The skin's coming off by itself. Here we go. This just really makes that peeling skin off process a lot faster. There we go, we get those cooled off. I'll put these in. I'm gonna let those go for 60 seconds. In the meantime, I'm gonna show you what we've accomplished. So if you just look, it just comes right off. It makes peeling these tomatoes so quick and easy, which is my preferred way to peel tomatoes. Is anybody growing their own tomatoes this year? I started my seedlings inside. I've got a grow light and um, I've got three different varieties of tomatoes growing. I've got some San Marzano's and some heirloom tomatoes from seeds I saved from tomato last year. Those are gonna cool for a second. I'm gonna get rid of this water because I wanna reuse this pot to start making my tomatoes. <clears throat> Moving on to the next stage in our stewed tomatoes, I am just going to take some tomatoes. I am going to cut them up, and if I find any more of the little hard white core, I'll just trim that out really quickly. And I'm just cutting these into pieces. We are going to heat them up in our pan. So I'm gonna turn that back on. And we do want these to boil, but we don't want to scald them, so we need to be really careful. Bench knife, one of my favorite tools. Okay, and I'm gonna do a couple cups worth of this. You can already hear them sizzling in the pan. Cook, they will soften up and then we'll be able to take a potato masher and smash them down so we have some crushed tomatoes and that's what creates the sauce in our stewed tomatoes. While those are cooking down and getting softer, I can go ahead and cut these up. Now you can do them as large as this. I prefer my stewed tomatoes to be bite size. And so that's how I cut them and it's up to you. If you'd like to see me make some Italian stewed tomatoes, or some 
some chili tomatoes, just let me know. And maybe uh, if there's enough of you, we'll go ahead and make that recipe as well. But for now, for my personal pantry, I think we'll just keep it simple. But I'm always happy to accommodate. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and check and see how soft they've become. They're not quite there yet. So they should smash down like when you're making mashed potatoes. That's the consistency that we're looking for. So I'm just gonna continue cutting up my tomatoes until we hit that point. All right, these are ready to smash and it looks very good. And if you don't have a large pot, that's okay. You can do this in batches. I'm gonna go ahead and add this in. And I'm gonna try and quickly cut the rest of these down because I want them to cook fairly evenly, but I was a little slow on the draw with these, so I'm just gonna get them going in there. And then once they're all in, we're gonna simmer them for five minutes. Finally, I've got all my tomatoes cut up in there. I'm gonna stir this up, and I'm gonna let it cook down for five minutes. While that's cooking down, I am gonna go ahead and clean up some of this stuff and then get my jars over here ready to go. Keep stirring this up so nothing scalds on the bottom of the pan. All right, my five minutes have ended. I didn't scald anything. I'm so proud of myself because distraction. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take some citric acid and put it in each one of my sanitized, well-washed jars. And I am going to use one four teaspoon for these little pint jars. If you're using four jars, you can use a half a teaspoon. And I'm just going to put it right there in the bottom of each jar. And I'm guessing that I'm going to need about six jars. So I may end up having to adjust that based on what I have. But I can also just use what's left in a recipe. So I put it in. So that's done. Get that out of there. I don't want to overdo it. There we go. So you can use fresh squeezed lemon juice as well. Just use the same amount. Um, make sure that you squeeze it all out into a container and then carefully measure it. And the lemon juice and the citric acid, they serve as a preserving agent. It keeps them from spoiling and it lasts longer on your shelf. So that's done. I have a colander because I can be messy. And I am going to spoon this in here. I'm gonna try and spread out the liquid versus these two tomatoes evenly between the jars. I don't know how well I'm gonna do with that, but I'm gonna try. And you wanna give a generous or inch on the top. So set this on a hot hot jar on a cold counter. Okay, so that's about how much you want left. And we're just going to repeat that process until all of our jars are filled. While I'm doing this, I have a large pot of water boiling. This pot is what we're going to use to give our warm water bath to seal these jars. The pan that you use for your warm water bath needs to be tall enough to fit your jars in there with the lid and your hand bottom protector, I call this my canning flower. The water has to completely cover your jars. So that's going to come to a boil as we fill these up and we'll be ready for our final step. So the next thing I want to do is take my lids. These are the canning lids, and these are unused. You can't use ones that have already been used for canning. It has this material on there that heats up and seals. It's like a suction. So then we take our rings, and we want to finger tighten them down. And these jars are pretty hot. That's my extra. There we go. So those are all finger tightened down. This water is almost boiling. I'm gonna go ahead and place this in there. Sometimes it undoes or you have it closed back up. So I'm gonna have to use my tongs to spread it back out. Um, and this is just gonna protect the bottom of my jars. I might have to hold this down while I, I haven't used it in this pot before. So it expands. I'm gonna use my spatula and push it in. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take a jar and I have a jar lifter and I can't find it and I'm going to carefully set this down on that rubber flower. If it'll stay. I'm gonna release it, I'm gonna do the next one. Alright, we've got all four 
jars in our pot. We're gonna let it boil. That'll take a few minutes, so while that's working, um, you can take your tomato scraps if you have a compost. Obviously, you can compost that. Um, otherwise, go ahead and pitch them, whatever you wanna do. Our jars have boiled for about 35 minutes, which is what you want for the pint jars. If you're using quart jars, continue that on for 45 minutes. And just carefully remove them. They are heavy, and since I don't have my pot lifter, I'm trying to be super careful. These need to completely cool. As they cool, you'll start to hear that popping sound, which is how you know it's sealed. Another way you can tell if it's sealed or not, you can use this jar, is this one we haven't done any canning with. You can move the lid up and down. Once these have sealed, you won't be able to do that. You won't hear that sound. Once this is cooled off, I'm gonna go ahead and take my Sharpie. I'm gonna write directly on the lid what the contents are, and then I'm gonna put them in my pantry. If you enjoyed today's episode, you know what to do. So good to see you again. Have a beautiful day. From my kitchen to yours, let's make food from food. That's one boy puppy.